this video is going to be about simple linear regression and the method called ordinary least squares, or sometimes just least squares for short. So in this setting, we have two quantitative variables, so we can call that x and y. Usually we think of x as the predictor, and then y as the response or the de dependent variable. So we have our little scatter plot here, x and y, and then we have each data point here. And the idea is we look at our scatter plot and it looks like x and y have some kind of linear relationship. And so ideally we would like to find the line that characterizes this linear relationship. And that means we need to find the intercept and the slope for that line. All right, so since we have a line, we know that the equation is going to be y equals intercept plus slope times our predictor. But that's the equation for the line. If we are trying to predict these values, then we need to add in that error term because these points don't perfectly fall on that line, right? Okay, so then we know that each of these y's is equal to intercept plus slope times our predictor plus whatever that error term is that says how far away that data point is from the line. All right, so <coughs> our parameters are alpha, theta, and then we need the variance of those epsilons. So the epsilons are normally distributed with mean zero, variance sigma squared, and this is another parameter. So we have three parameters going on in this um, setting. We have alpha, beta, and sigma squared. And usually in the simple linear regression setting, we also assume that these error terms are independent and identically distributed. All right. So we know that we are looking for this line, and we're looking for the alpha and the beta and the sigma squared that characterizes it. Um, but how do we actually find the line that best fits this data? So in an applied class, we just gave R or Minitab or whatever software we were using, we gave them our um, data, and then it just found the ideal alpha and beta values for us. But now in this class, since it's a more theoretical class, we're learning how do we actually estimate alpha, how do we actually estimate beta and sigma squared. Okay, so the idea is we're going to look at the residuals. So remember residuals are whatever the data point is minus its estimate. So this is our residual. If we take it and square it, then we end up with a sum of squared residuals when we also add them all up. Okay, so this is our sum of squared residuals. Or sometimes you hear it called RSS for short. Okay, so if we take this, the idea is by squaring it, we're saying if a point is pretty far away from that line, we're going to penalize it a lot, more than um, if it were closer to the line like this one here. Um, so that penalizes points that are further away from that line. All right, so this is what we're going to try to use to find alpha and beta. Um, so remember that this is one way to write our regression equation. Another way to write it is like this. So we could either write y equals alpha plus beta x plus epsilon, or we could write y hat equals alpha plus beta times xi. Okay, so if we think about it like this, then we can rewrite this sum of squared residuals as so. All right, so what we're doing in this ordinary least squares setting is taking this sum of squared residuals and then finding the alpha and beta that minimize this sum of squared residuals. So that's what our software is doing, R, Jump, Minitab, whatever we're using. That's what our software is usually doing when we do this simple linear regression stuff. It's just finding the alpha and beta that minimizes our residual sum of squares. So this is not very difficult. We just need to do a little bit of calculus. So we would, if we're trying to minimize this, you know, we take our derivative um, with respect to alpha, our derivative with respect to beta, set those equal to zero, um, solve for alpha and beta, and then we, of course, take the second derivative to make sure that we're actually minimizing the residual sum of squares and not, like, maximizing the residual sum of squares. So if you want to, like, 
go through all the derivations that's in the book, and it's a little bit too boring to do in the video, so you can go through that in the book and, of course, ask me any questions in office hours or during class or whatever if you'd like. All right, so the next thing we're going to be talking about is the um, tying this back to maximum likelihood, and we'll see that the estimates that we get um, through this method of ordinary least squares are going to be the same as those that we will get through maximum likelihood. 